When the college season ends for teams, they go right away on their recruiting trail. It's almost immediately season is over. Nobody kicks back and enjoys what you did this season. You got to go find more players so more seasons can be as successful as the one Will Brown had at the University of Albany, a 21-win season, and all the way to the America East uh, Championship game against Vermont. And the coach on the road, I forget even where he told me he was headed. Good morning, Coach. How are we doing, Rog? Good, Coach. Where, where are you at? Oh, I'm out in lovely Hutchinson, Kansas. Kansas. There Kansas. you go. Did you, did you fly out early, early this morning? I flew out late last night. Late last and, night. And uh, I flew into Wichita, and then I, I got to Wichita about... Uh, Eleven thirty last night, and then had about an hour drive into Hutchinson from uh, from Wichita. So, you know, fun fun time of year. <laughs> I learned I learned something this morning. They're listening to you guys. Tom the... Brady's jersey, huh? Yeah, <laughs> yeah. The, st- the stuff that excites the sports world. It's unbelievable. I know, I know. Lead, lead material, right? Live, local, late breaking. Uh, have Where you had... was it sitting, sitting on top of some of those deflated footballs? <laughs> <laughs> Will Brown joins us. He's been with us every Monday, and we thought it'd be appropriate to have him on uh, another one more time here to kind of wrap things up because they played in the CIT uh, last week, ended up losing to, to St. Peter's, but all in all, a terrific season, uh, one that I don't think anybody expected to be this good. Maybe because Coach Brown did, but how do you how do you sum up the uh, the season, Coach? Now that it's officially over, you know, I th- I think looking back, uh, you know, it was a good season for us for sure. You know, anytime at at our level, uh, it's hard. You know, when you graduate three really good perimeter players like we did in Hooley, uh, Sanders, and Singletary, all all conference guys in the America East. You know, it's just common sense uh, that hey. You're going to take a step back, uh, you know, and for us to win 21 games, get to the conference tournament championship game and have a chance to win that game in the final minute on the road and then play in the CIT, I think it's uh, it was a really good year for us. We had three guys on the perimeter who had never started a college game before. And, um, you know, after the 18 game point uh we made a change in our lineup that's not easy either uh you went from a guy that was playing a few minutes at best in Devonte campbell and you put him in the lineup and he goes from a few minutes to 30 minutes a night and uh you have to adjust to that and uh you know, I thought our guys did a did a really good job this year uh, of making progress and getting better as the season uh, moved along. And I think our future is is very bright. Uh, it's a future that I'm I'm excited about, and I know our guys are excited about. Uh, you know, as well. With that being said, uh, you know, there's a lot of hard work that goes into taking the next step. Uh, we want to get back to the NCAA tournament, and only one team in our league uh, is going to get that opportunity each year. So, you know, watching our guys' body language after the Vermont game in the locker room, uh, the towels over their head, the, the tears, you know, hopefully that's motivation that they don't want to feel like that again, and they've got that you know, they're, that burning sensation in their gut. That's you know, come on, let's let's move forward, let's get better. We don't want we don't want to have this feeling, you know, ever again. You know, easier said than done, but you know, really good season in my mind, and we're very excited about our future. Yeah, uh, Coach Will Brown with us. We wrap up the U Albany men's basketball season. Three Aussies come into the program next year. I know you're high on all three. One in particular, and you bring everybody back outside of Dallas. And Mike Rowley, so your five top scorers back. Uh, a, gr- a growing and learning year for the backcourt, and they'll be juniors next year. And then Vermont looks like they're going to be really good again too. A good showing in the NCAA tournament against uh, Purdue, a bigger team. I think the size just wore them down. They end up losing by ten, but it looks like going into next year, it could very well be a little Vermont U Albany all over again well i hope so uh, that would be uh, a lot of fun you know hopefully we can find a way to get the final game if we both get to it in the sefq arena but uh you know vermont's going to return four starters uh you know they do lose dre wills he yeah. has been the thorn in albany side this year um you know he really i thought was the difference uh, especially in their game you know, up at Vermont, he just, uh, every minute he was in the game, you know, he shadowed David Nichols all over the court. And, uh, but they do lose him and they lose Steitel, who did a really good job on, on Joe Cremo as well. So they, they lose a couple of key guys. And, 
You know, we lose uh, Dallas and and Mike, uh, but we do return our five leading scorers, and uh, I think that bodes really well for us. I think the league continues to get better, uh, which I think is good uh, for the America East, and, you know, I think every team in our league will be better, um, you know, next year. I mean, Vermont, uh, at worst, I think will be the same, (laughs) which is scary, (laughs) but, uh, you know, I uh, I do think that we'll be better. Uh, next year than we were uh, this past year. Uh, just the natural maturation process and progressing and guys getting another year under their belt in the system and some new guys uh, coming into the program. So, you know, I think it's a good time uh, for our program and, you know, hopefully everybody's excited about it and, you know, we've got some great fans and, uh, you know, I know our administration and Mark Benson are being very supportive of our program as we continue to try to grow and develop and, and get better. Hey, well, I, I got to do my job and at least ask you about the coaching situation. When programs like yours uh, do so well year in and year out, same can be said for John Becker at Vermont and others. It, it goes without saying that other schools who have openings may want to take a look and reach out and all of that. Where, where do we stand at Quinnipiac? Uh, you, you came up on a list of Quinnipiac. Where, where do you I stand? Did? In, yeah, you did. Um, oh, uh, okay. The, the, the guy from ESPN actually um, closed John, at home. Jeff Jeff Goodman. Yeah, Jeff it, Goodman. I, actually, the only reason why I brought it up is because I have a lot of respect for Goodman because normally he's pretty locked in. Yeah. Anyway, he had you at Becker and a few others uh, out there. Where, where do you stand on on you know listening at least listening to anybody that wants to to get your name involved in a program? You know what, Raj? I think when your name is is mentioned, um, I think that's a credit. You know, to your players, to your coaching staff, uh, and quite frankly, to your administration as well. I think, uh, you know, a lot goes into having a successful program. And I think when you have success, uh, you know, things like this happen. Uh, I think your name gets bounced around. Um, from my end, uh, it's, it's happened in the past over the years. Some of, some public and some not public. And I've had some opportunities, uh, in the past to, to move on. And, you know, I, I think you owe it to yourself and to your family. As you know, Rod, we put so much time and effort into what we do. Yep. And, you know, when you have success, uh, you know, I think it's natural that there's interest from, uh, from other programs. And I, and, and I think you owe it to yourself and you owe it to your family to listen. I think you're foolish if you don't nowadays. And, uh, I'm very happy at the University at Albany. Um, the university has been very good to me. I work with great people. Like I said, Mark Penson's done a wonderful job as our athletic director, and he's really trying to help our program grow and develop. And, uh, you know, and I'm excited about our future. So I'm very happy where I'm at. Uh, but like I said, uh, I will listen. Um, that's something that I learned at a young age. My, my old man used to tell me, uh, listening is a skill. Get good at it. I'm not sure how good at it I am right now, uh, but, uh, you know, I'm trying to get better at it. But, you know, uh, I'm open to listening. But with that being said, you know, uh, I've said this to you, and I think I've said it publicly. If You know, I don't think I can coach as long as Doc Sowers did. Um, you know, that's pretty special, coaching that long. But if somebody told me at the end of today, hey, you're going to be at Albany until you retire, uh, you know, I can smile and say that that, that that's that's awesome, you know. Yeah. So I'm not eager to make a move, Raj, uh, but and I'm excited about you know trying to find a way to to beat Vermont next year and get back to the NCAA tournament. And you know, I love our former players, our current players, and uh, you know we've got great fans and just excited. You know, I know you're doing your job and you have to ask the question, and uh, you know I can uh, I can appreciate that, but you know I'm just. Uh, doing what I'm doing right now. I'm out on the road recruiting, trying to make our program better. Yep. Well, listen, you've done a great job, and that's the reason that guys like yourself and, and John Becker has done a really good job at Vermont. That's why you, you get the phone calls, and I, I don't disagree. If you're a head coach, and even though you have a really good situation in Albany, how could you not, not at least listen to other offers or at least, you know, see what's going on at a school like Quinnipiac. We'll see what happens. I know one thing. Uh, Mike Hopkins was tired of waiting in Syracuse. <laughs> he says, I'm Yeah, that, that caught me off guard. I'll be honest with yeah. you. I was traveling and I saw that and I had to take it. It was like a double take. I'm like, What? 
And then I see, like, a, a little later in the day, uh, you know, Bayheim got extended. And uh, so it's a, it's a crazy business. But, you know, Mike Hopkins is a West Coast guy. And, you know, Washington's, uh, that's a good job, you know, Pac-12 and, you know, being a West Coast guy. And he's been around a while. And, you know, sometimes I can't see myself, to be honest with you, coaching at Bayheim's age or coaching when, you know, like Doc. Doc Sowers did. I just can't see myself doing it, probably because my golf game is terrible. Um, <laughs> you know, but, uh, you know, maybe the older I get, uh, you know, my mindset will change. But, you know, I think Hopkins, uh, he's probably got a good pulse on that Syracuse situation. And, you know, it sounded late in the year like Bayheim was itching to continue to coach. And you know what? The guy's a Hall of Famer, and uh, he should probably be able to coach as long as he wants, I would think. That sounds like uh, what he wanted. I don't know what, what came first, whether he decided he's going to stay longer or, or Hopkins said, you know what, I'm not waiting. And then they said to Bayheim, I hope you're not going anywhere because we're, we're losing Mike Hopkins to Washington. But wh whatever the situation. I don't know if you want to be the guy that follows Bayheim no. anyway. No. Not at it all. might as well. It, it, it should just be a Syracuse guy because they, you know, because if they hire somebody from the outside and they come in and they start playing man to man and they start losing, uh, you know, <laughs> you might get run out of town. <laughs> hey, listen, well, we appreciate it. Uh, safe travels out there and get back to watching the games, and we'll talk to you soon. Hey, thanks, Raj. Appreciate uh, everything uh, you and your team did uh, all season long. And uh, if you're ever bored and uh, you need somebody to call in, let me know, man. <laughs> Well, as we get deeper into the, into the madness, uh, I'm sure we will need that. We'll we'll definitely reach out, Coach. Sounds good. Have a good one. Talk you to too. you guys soon.